Greetings everyone. Today we're going to take a look at some series parallel DC circuit approximations. What do you do when you're presented with a circuit and it doesn't have nice convenient sort of values? Can you approximate values, come up with something that's decent, you know, not three, four digit accuracy, but something you could walk in lab very quick, quickly with a DMM, take some measurements and see if, uh, you know, things look decent. Let's take a look at a circuit over here. So I've got a little 15 volt power supply, handful of resistors. Notice these are all um, standard sorts of values. They're not nice convenient numbers we might use for a, you know, a quick problem. So these are not numbers that are going to work out, you know, with nice simple ratios, two to one, three to one. But we can do approximations that'll get us pretty close. It's not as hard as it seems. You don't have to immediately run out and grab your calculator and start punching numbers furiously. You know, sometimes all you want to know is, am I getting about a milliamp? You know, 15 milliamps? Is this going to be about 3 volts, 6 volts? You know, where around am I? So when you set up something in a lab, you can see very quickly when you're doing your measurements whether it's sensible or you know, it'll jump out that something is clearly not correct. You know, something is not set up correctly. Maybe a component is accidentally shorted or opened or, you know, what, what have you. So let's take a look at this, see what we have. All right. Series 6.8K with this triple resistor combo. All right. So this is a parallel combo of the 12K and another series combo, right? So the R2 and R3, the 1K and the 2.2K, those are in series. That combo is in parallel with R4, the 12K. And that three resistor combo is now in series with the 6K, or 6.8K, excuse me, R1 and the 15 volt power supply. So we want to find a couple of voltages, right? I want to find uh, what's the voltage at node A to ground? What's the node, uh, node voltage B to ground? Right, so node voltage A is the drop across the 12K. Or you could say it's the com combined drop between the uh, R2 and R3, the 1 and the 2.2K. And then node B is the voltage across the R3, the 2.2K. All right. We could also find some currents. All right. So where do we start? All right. To get node A, really it's a voltage divider between this R1 and this big combo. So I need to know what this combo is. All right, well, that's a 12K in parallel with this. Now, this easily enough, we can see, okay, one and a 2.2, that's 3.2K. Now you want to say, what's that in parallel with 12K, right? What's 3.2K in parallel with 12K? So immediately, you know, you, you're going to run over to your calculator, right? No. We're just looking at an approximation. 3.2K versus 12K. Now, that's about, not quite, but about a 4 to 1 ratio. And if you remember our parallel rule, you know, if you have a ratio of n between two resistors, then you're going to get this um, n over n plus 1 sort of, of uh, adjustment, if you will, on the parallel combo. So, uh, you know, if, if um, you had, let's say, a 2 to 1 ratio, you're going to wind up with 2 thirds of the smaller resistor. You have a 3 to 1 ratio, right, you're going to end up with about three quarters of the smaller resistor and so on and so forth, right? If two resistors are the same size, you know, you get one over two, half of the smaller one. So what do we end up with here? You know, we've got a, a, a four to one, roughly four to one ratio. So, you know, we're going to get about 80%, a little less than 80% of that, of, of the smaller, of the, of the uh, combo here, treat this as one resistor. Treat this as a 3.2K resistor, right? Roughly 3K in our approximation. So you take, you know, 80% of that, and what are you going to wind up with? You know, three quarters or so. Well, again, quick approximation, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, call it 2.5K, maybe a little more, a little less. But again, we're just trying to ballpark this. So that's what we're looking at for this combo. And that winds up being in series with the 6.8. So right off the bat, you can see node A is going to be considerably less than 15 volts. I mean, it's not going to be a, a volt. It's not going to be a quarter of a volt. 
but it's not going to be 12, right? If this whole thing is sitting around 2.5K versus the 6.8, you're going to get less than 30%, right? Think about it. 6.8, 2.5. You know, if that was uh, 5K, then you would be getting a third. You'd be getting 5 volts on voltage divider. But 6.8 versus 2.5, okay, we're going to get a little bit less than that. You know, maybe, I don't know, four, somewhere around there, okay? So if I build this circuit and I stick my DMM, node A, to ground, and I measure, you know, nine volts, immediately, boom, we know that's wrong. I measure two volts, immediately, we know that's wrong. Maybe I measure, I don't know, 3.87 or 4.12. Those are, you know, within, within um, uh, an expected range. And of course, we also know you go into a bin and you grab a 12K resistor, it's not going to be exactly 12K. It's got a tolerance itself. So again, we're just trying to get a ballpark here. So, all right, let's say 4 volts. You know, again, nice round sort of number, 4 volts. Now, what about node B? All right, so that's going to be, here's a 1K and a 2.2. So we're looking at a little over two-thirds, maybe 70%. Okay, 70% for uh, node B, 70% of 4 volts, 2.8 volts, right? So again, 4 volts we're going to expect over there, um, maybe 2.8 volts over here. We can figure out the currents too, all right? So what are we looking at? Well, 4 volts, 12K, that one's kind of convenient. That does work out to be a nice sort of 3 to 1 ratio. Um, so, you know, we're looking at maybe a third of a, a, third of a milliamp, right? Of course, that four volts was an approximation, so we don't expect it to be exactly a third, but somewhere around there, you know, a third of a milliamp. And then coming over here, same kind of thing. We've got uh, four volts um, sitting over, you know, a, a 3.2k resistor. You want to round that off to again 3k. You know, what are we looking at? A uh, milliamp and a third. You know, somewhere around there, a little less, because this is actually a little bit more than 3k. So a little bit more resistance, a little bit less current, all right? The more resistance, the less current. So somewhere in that vicinity. All right, so if I've got about a one and a third here and I've got about a third here, we're looking at maybe one and two thirds, a little bit less than one and two thirds, you know, maybe, I don't know, 1.6 or so milliamps coming through here, right? Coming across that uh, uh, R1, the 6.8K. So let's see what we actually get, right? That's our that's just our approximation. Just trying to get um, a ballpark feel, not super, super accurate. We just want to know around where we're sitting. So let's do our DC analysis here. We'll get our table of results. Open this up, see where we are. Okay, so here's our node A. All right, right here, node A. Um, the drop across the R4. So I highlight that. And um, we can see, well, hey, 4.063. Hey, our approximation was pretty good. We are also talking about a third of a mil coming down here. And we can see that the current through R4 is 338.6 microamps, right? Virtually a third, just a smidge over a third of a milliamp. Cool. All right. Um, let's go grab um, the node B over here. That would be our, our 3, the 2.2K. Um, and we were... We were looking at somewhere around, I think, 2.8 volts, if I remember correctly. And, um, oh, yeah, look at that. That's, that's ideal, 2.793. Okay, we're right on that 2.8. Maybe a little bit of luck there with our approximation, but that's, that's good. And there's our current. You know, we were expecting, like I said, a little bit less than, than um, one and a third mils, and we're getting 1.27 mils, right? So right between like a one and a quarter, one and a third, that's looking good. The um, current flowing through R1 over here, the 6.8K, we were expecting a little less than one and two thirds. So there's our 1.608 is what that's popping up to. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we can just kind of go from there. And once we know a few of those things in lab, you know, we can see very quickly if, if uh, everything else is sort of making sense. Now, suppose you come in here now let's think in terms of uh, maybe a wiring error. You come in here and um, you know your node A voltage is 
higher. You know, it's not four volts. You're getting something a bit higher. Um, maybe it's modestly higher, you know, like maybe it's five volts, five and a half, six volts. Maybe it's considerably higher. You know, maybe it's uh, 10, 11 volts. Okay. What kind of things would be going wrong here? Well, you know, if the voltage is going up, that would imply that there must be more resistance because you're still going to have a divider with the 6.8K. Um, the magnitude of that change kind of gives you a clue in terms of what the problem is. You know, what are the typical sorts of problems? You know, we've talked about this before. Well, you could have a component that's accidentally shorted, accidentally opened. Now, if the voltage is going up, if node A is going up, chances are we didn't short something. We probably opened something. The other possibility is we have an incorrect resistor in there somewhere. Um, you know, you could reach into the bin and, um, you know, maybe you forgot your color code. Who knows? You reach into the wrong bin. And instead of having a 1K, uh, you've got a 10K. All right. Instead of a 2.2K, you've got a 2.7K. Something along that line. Or maybe this resistor is smaller. All right. Maybe you don't have a 6.8K. You've got a 5.6K. Okay. Got to know your color code here. All right. So the magnitude of that, exp of that change compared to the expected value kind of gives you a clue. So like I said, well, you know, what if it was... Um, just a little bit higher instead of four volts, right? Instead of instead of getting four volts across this guy, you know, 4.063, we're getting maybe five or six volts. All right, well, this could be open. If R4 was open, then instead of having this whole thing be two and a half K, if this is open, we just have a 3.2 K for this combo. So now it's a drop of the 3.2 K versus the 6.8 K. So, hey, 3.2, 6.8, conveniently, that adds up to 10K. And now you're looking at um, about a third of the total resistance, which means about a third of that voltage, or around 5 volts. That's what you would expect over here. You know, we could, we could do a very quick simulation by just taking our 4 and you know, putting in a crazy large value here, like, you know, make it... Um, 12 uh, mega ohms, okay, which is not an open, but it's, you know, it's a pretty darn big value compared to just a couple of K. And we'll redo that analysis. Let's see what we come up with. All right, so 4.799, so virtually you know, 4.8, just about 5 volts there. And if it really was open, it would be obviously a little bit higher than that. Let's go back, change this back to the original value. Oops. If you had um, maybe opened one of these, all right, so let's take this 1K. I'll do the same trick. I'll just make this um, a 1 meg. What do you think is going to happen? All right, so if you accidentally open this, then all you have is a divider between a 6.8 and a 12. Well, that's, you know, just about a 2 to 1 ratio. So, you know, we're going to be looking at 10-ish, a little bit less than 10, because this is a little bit more than half the size of this guy. So, um, you know, somewhere between probably 9, 10 volts in that range. Let's do a, do a little analysis over here. And where are we? Okay, 9.533. All right. So those are some examples that would happen if you had, uh, like I said, opened resistors, or at least my approximated open resistors. If you had shorted them, the other, you know, sort of the opposite thing happens. If you were, for example, to short the um, R3 value, then you wind up with a 1K in parallel with 12K, which is going to get you just a little bit less than 1K. So you're only going to have, you know, about an eighth of the total here um, as far as the resistance, this total resistance. So you're only going to be looking at maybe a couple of volts for node A. If you'd accidentally shorted R2, the giveaway there 
is that node A and node B would be the same voltage. Right? This, if you short this. So this point becomes this point. Node B and node A are indistinguishable. So if you go into lab and you put your DMM over here, you get the wrong value. But more importantly, that wrong value is echoed over here in node B. The only way node A and node B can be the same voltage is if there is no drop across R2. Right? In which case, this must be shorted. It won't be the case that this is opened. Right? If this was open, because you might think, well, if they're the same, you know, it's an open. Well, if this, this is an open, then there's no current flowing down through here, which means there's no current through R3, which means there's no drop on R3, which means node B would be ground. Right? Node B would show up as zero. So those are the things you're looking for, right? Typical wiring mistakes or, or um, opens and shorts. Of course, another you know, popular quote unquote error would be just accidentally swapping resistors. You put the 2.2 where the 12 is and you put the 12 where the 2.2 is, right? And again, things kind of go off into, into crazy land. But you can still just do these simple approximations, right? If you had a 2.2 over here and a 12, now you got a 13K in parallel with a 2.2K, right? What's that ratio? Remember, you take two resistors or equivalents and you put them in parallel, you always get less than the smaller branch. So if this was a 2.2 and this was a 12, this whole thing has to be less than 2.2K, right? You got 13 and a 2.2. Well, that's going to be you know, somewhere in the 2K-ish range, okay, for this whole thing, you compare that to the 6.8, yeah, you're going to get a, a much smaller value at your node A than what you had before, all right? So again, you can set up the circuit, do these real quick, you know, sort of uh, um, approximations in your head, just so you have a, a coarse idea of what's going on. And this will really help you with troubleshooting. When you um, look at something and you say, you know, um, I am getting a voltage, you know, I'm not getting a, a, a zero volts or I'm not getting the power supply, that kind of thing. Because some of these are obvious, right? If node A was 15 volts, then you know that, hey, there's no drop across R1. If there's no drop across it, this somehow must be shorted, right? Or maybe you did something really goofy. You put a 6.8 ohm resistor in there and compared to these things, the drop is, you know, negligible. Um, so some of those are obvious, but you got other weird things. Like I said, you get a node A that's sitting at uh, six volts or nine volts, something like that. Okay, something's open, something shorted. Maybe you have um, the resistor swapped, or you've got a wrong resistor in there. But that's a very quick way, just using these little approximations, of figuring out where the problem is. And let's face it, if you have those kinds of numbers and you dive into the circuit and your very first value that you're measuring is out in space somewhere, then you know there's no reason to go any further. Stop. Stop what you're doing. If you're expecting somewhere in the vicinity of 4 volts and you're getting you know, 12, don't continue. You know, Back up. Don't just forge ahead. Fill out the rest of your data table. Just stop. Take stock. Figure out what the heck went wrong here. Right? And it can be solved with these very simple rules. Ohm's law, right? Kirchhoff's voltage law, current law, um, voltage divider rule, those simple sorts of things, just lots of ratios is really what you're dealing with. Those things are not going to be violated. Those rules are not going to be violated. And that'll set you on the path. All right. And then ultimately, you know, you're going to want to measure the precise values of these components so you get some accuracy. You know, get out your calculator and grind out the values with, with some precision. Um, and then you can really check just, just how close you, you really are in, in, the, uh, in the lab compared to what's on paper. And if you take your time with that, you will, of course, come up with some, some very tight, uh, tight agreement on those numbers. But this idea of being able to make approximations, extremely useful. So get used to doing this. Just take those approximations practice it practice makes perfect practice it get used to it soon it'll be second nature take care